can you say daddy plays video games? Daddy's funny nuggets. So I'm going to try and make this as brief as I can. As I know, a lot of people don't really like sticking around for seven plus minutes of a dude rambling. But I have a thought that I have been wanting to share regarding the Call of Duty series. And I, I've been wanting to share this for a while now. I actually talked about it with some guys at work. And uh, they actually you know, kind of agreed with me as well. So what is this going to take for us? In my opinion, each Call of Duty has had the same basic recipe. Uh, one which we buy every year, hoping it's going to be some new revolutionary flavor. But it really hasn't been. I think one of the biggest leaps in the Call of Duty series was from Modern Warfare 3 to Black Ops 2, and Treyarch did a lot of stuff, which was great, but even then it was kind of the same model, it just played differently. And of course, most of us, if not all of us on PC, were very disappointed, to say the least, on how Ghost turned out. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Call of Duty, and I will play it every year in November when it comes out, but I can... can not buy that damn game every year. Now, each year there is something cool, but nothing that really changes. But what could they do? I mean, Treyarch and Infinity Ward have been flip flopping over the past two years, cap you know, trying to create this captivating single player campaign, this in depth, decision filled, open ended, OP free multiplayer as well. And even the most streamlined studio with the most captivating leadership team would have a tough go at it in only two years to create this kind of product. Now, there is a change in the water, though. Activision has brought on Sledgehammer, which you can see in a previous video I did. And you've probably seen around the internet on much cooler YouTubers. Create the, the, Sledgehammer is going to create the next Call of Duty for this year. Which means also that Activision has bumped into a three-year development cycle instead of a two-year development cycle. But will it change that much? Now, here's my opinion, thought on how Call of Duty can climb back onto the top of the FPS tower and dominate with their heads held high. Now this is a simplistic plan in its nature, but one and, and I'm sure is going to ruffle some feathers and might cause some heads to turn or shake. So give me the benefit of the doubt here and let me explain it. So the next Call of Duty, and I doubt Sledgehammer's done this, but maybe Treyarch they should spend three solid years creating the next Call of Duty that is purely 110% multiplayer. No single player attached to it. Now think about it. How many of us buy this game for the single player? How many, how many people are like, oh, I can't wait for the next Call of Duty to come out to play that campaign? Nobody does. I, for one, I've, I mean, I've said this many times. I haven't played more than five hours single player between the last three Call of Duties combined. I couldn't care less what the single player had to offer me. It's on rails, it's poorly scripted, it's like a half-hearted action movie with montages and weapons that I would prefer to spend time shooting other people in the face with and not some AI that I've been told to shoot by this game on rails. Now, I have been mulling over this for weeks and I'm glad I'm finally coming out with this video because a recent game that just came out called Titanfall has actually kind of done this. Now, they've kind of done this. They did a really great job, in my opinion, on kind of trying, they did a great job, they had a great attempt, here we go, at trying to bring in some, um, some meat to the storyline by creating that multiplayer campaign where they incentivized people to go through that. But here's the thing, everybody, that game is purely 110% multiplayer, and even when you're playing the quote-unquote campaign, you're still playing multiplayer. Now, I don't know much about Titanfall, the their response development process, or how long they spent, but the game is incredible. Now, it does have some glaring shortfalls, for sure, but they spent their development time creating a multiplayer experience that we all purchased the game for. Now, if Call of Duty did that, oh man, I mean, just imagine, guys, three years' time spent on Call of Duty. Three years' time spent on perks, on kill streaks, on weapons, on weapon attachment, on, I mean, just on maps. Three years' time spent on that. And go with me a little further on this. Call of Duty right now, all of their single players are on rails. Call of Duty Ghost, the little bit of time I spent in the single player universe, that would have been amazing as a single player game that was sandbox. And think of the money they could make on that. They spent three years developing a, 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 a multiplayer IP, they spent three years developing a sandbox. Call of Duty, where it's this massive world where you, you upgrade guns, you upgrade your equipment, you go through there. It's kind of this quasi-GTA slash 
I don't know, it could be Call of Duty, but single player sandbox, I would buy the crap out of that game and play it. Now, just try to think about that. I mean, how awesome would that be? This is, in my opinion, we've already kind of reached the five minute mark, so I'm gonna let you guys go so you don't have to hear me rambling anymore. But I think what the next Call of Duty has to do to get back on top is to spend their time creating 110% multiplayer. And I would buy that game. And I think if you spend three years creating a multiplayer, I think you're gonna do a great job. Anyway, tell me what you guys think. Have a great day. Mission accomplished. A good day's work.